satellite communications came to Bahrain as naturally as ships and aircraft. This four million pound satellite station, opened by cable and wireless in 1969, provides instant high quality communication with the rest of the world by telephone, telex and telegram. Almost in the centre of the oil field, within a few hundred yards of Bahrain's first historic oil find, stands another link in the country's communication chain. These giant dishes send and receive high quality radio telephone messages over short ranges, linking Bahrain with other Gulf states. Soon, another £2 million investment programme will link businessmen with the international subscriber dialing system. The operation of this complex communication system has meant using some of the most advanced electronic techniques in the world. But cable and wireless have found they can rely on the natural aptitude and dexterity of the Bahraini. The company employs several hundred local people and it has four training schools on the island. Bahrain's new 40 million pound aluminium smelter, being built on the east coast, will be the first major heavy industry in the Gulf area apart from oil. It's owned by an international consortium, Aluminium Bahrain, and the Bahrain government has a 27% holding. It will be one of the first industries to take advantage of Bahrain's huge field of natural gas. To feed the generators making the vast quantities of electricity needed for the smelting process, BAPCO will provide each day more than double the present daily output of gas obtained from the North Sea. The smelter's initial capacity will be 90,000 tonnes, and most of the output will be for export. But the Bahrain government is encouraging the development of secondary industries based on the smelter. Already, there are plans for the production of aluminium powder in a factory sponsored by the government in conjunction with British and German companies. When the smelter is finished, it will have a staff of almost a thousand, but two and a half thousand men are needed during the construction stage. Local contractors are responsible for the bulk of the work, which is on schedule, and most of the supervision is carried out by Bahraini engineers working alongside specialists from all over the world. But some of the work for the smelter is being carried out at the DeLong Wimpy fabrication yard, 10 miles away. About 300 Bahrainis work here, under the supervision of local foremen. And since 1964, they've been demonstrating their engineering skills by building offshore drilling platforms and other major pieces of equipment for the oil industry. With the arrival of the super tanker, the yard has been moving into new fields. A recent $9 million contract was for a huge sea island for loading super tankers off the coast of Saudi Arabia. Bahrain's growing importance as a trading center in the Gulf has resulted in a parallel growth in its ship repair yard. The Bahrain Ship Repairing and Engineering Company, a totally local concern with 700 Bahraini shareholders, has the most extensive facilities to be found anywhere between Rotterdam and Hong Kong. There are two slipways, each capable of slipping ships of up to a thousand tons and more than 200 feet in length. Wooden dows built in Bahrain have enjoyed a reputation for excellence over thousands of years. Now the materials have changed, but the reputation remains. The sons of the dow builders tackle any aspect of ship repairing on vessels small enough to fit the slipways or on huge tankers at sea. Another locally owned project is the plastics factory in the free zone at Mina Sulman. The factory makes nearly a hundred different products, from jugs to water pipes and soft drinks cases to jerry cans. In a highly competitive field, it sells successfully to Bahrain's domestic market and has a thriving export business. Fishing is another fast-growing industry in Bahrain. Prawns are the main catch. They are processed and frozen in a factory in the free zone and then sent to the United States, Japan and Europe. The fleet was formed in 1967 with eight boats and now has nearly doubled in size. The only time they can be seen in port in any numbers is during the refitting and overhaul period. 60% of the shares in the fishing company, which employs over 500 men in season, are held by Bahraini investors and the remainder by Ross Fisheries of Grimsby. <laughs> <laughs>